Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church, Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments on a daily basis with the Word of God. Thank you for joining me today as we continue our uh, series on Jairus and um, expecting delays. Sometimes you see that sign up on the expressway, you're trying to get to a particular place, and there's a sign that says, expect delays. And the point we learned yesterday is life's delays does not mean when you pray God's denial. Just because you're having a delay does not necessarily mean you're not going to get to where God wants you to get to. Amen. Amen. Now, you remember the story. Jarius, who is the head of the synagogue, he has a, prest a prestigious position, comes to Jesus and says, my 12-year-old daughter, her life is swinging in the balance. But she's like a pendulum swinging back and forth between life and death. And there's a sense of urgency. And Jesus consents to come and help Jairus and heal his daughter. In the process of going to Jairus' house, there's a delay. And the two delays is one, the crowd. And then there's another woman. So this story is like a miracle. There's a miracle within the miracle, as we shall see, because there's a woman who's been hemorrhaging for 12 years, has spent all of her money trying to get well and has gotten worse. But she heard about Jesus, and the Bible says that she pressed her way through the crowd, which means she pushed. Anytime you get something in life, you got to be willing to press and push because life is never easy. So she had to press her way and just reach with the limited strength she had and touch the hem of his garment. In fact, she was talking to herself, and she says, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. And when she did, touched his hem in faith, well, the virtue was in Jesus went into her, and the sickness was in her went into Jesus because Jesus is always wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. She's healed. And, and once the virtue that was in Jesus went into her, Jesus said, who touched me? And Jairus is in his mind saying, Jesus, who cares who touched you? Come on. No delays. We've got to get to my daughter. But guess what Jesus does? He doesn't, he doesn't rush he, because God is never in a hurry. God is always on time. But God is never in a hurry. And guess what Jesus did? He sat there in front of Jairus and the crowd and asked the woman to tell her story, to tell her story. And after she tells her story, Jesus says to her, daughter, your faith, he calls her daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. And as soon as Jesus says that, messengers from Jairus' house come to Jairus and they give him bad news. Verse 35 tells us basically what they said. While Jesus was saying this, saying to the woman, go in peace, you're healed. While Jesus was saying this, some messengers came from Jairus' house and told him, your daughter has died. Why bother the teacher any longer? Now, let me say this. You see two extremes, two emotions. First of all, when Jairus first went to Jesus, he asked, Jesus, will you come and help my daughter? And guess what? Jesus said, yes, I will come. And Jesus starts off on the journey to help his daughter daughter. How do you think Jairus felt when Jesus said, yes, I'm coming to your house? He's excited. He's euphoric. But then there's a delay. And then these messengers come and say in verse 35, don't bother Jesus anymore. The, the delay is too costly. Leave the master alone. And guess what? When he hears this, his hope goes down. So in other words, he goes from extreme highs. Jesus is coming to help my daughter to an extreme low, well, it's too late. Highs and lows. And in life, we will have the highs and the lows. Notice that uh, the messenger said, don't bother the, the master any longer. Your daughter is dead. You know, dead, when you hear the word dead, that means it's over. That means irreversible. That means a place of finality. That means hopelessness. Have you ever been in a situation where you heard those words? Are you in a situation now where you're thinking those words, you know, this is irreversible, this is, this is final, 
and there's no hope. You ever heard those words? Well, listen to me, my brothers and sisters. When things seem hopeless, remember that God is the God of hope. And that with God, there is never hopelessness. With God, no situation in life is ever irreversible. The same thing these messengers said to Jairus is the same thing that the devil is going to say to you. Those messengers said, don't bother Jesus anymore. More. Your daughter is dead. And you're, the devil will say to you in your mind, don't pray anymore. Don't have faith anymore. Don't trust anymore. It's over. It's dead. Don't bother God anymore. Expect Satan to say that to you. Don't trouble God anymore. Well, listen to me, my sisters and brothers. The powerful point to ponder is this, is that when God is still with you, and Jesus is with Jairus. He's right next to Jairus. There's always hope. And because God is with you, there is always hope. Do you remember the time when Jesus was in a storm and Jesus was asleep and the disciples were wrestling with the storm and they and, and they woke up Jesus and said, Jesus, they prayed to him. Do you care that we perish? And Jesus woke up. You know what we don't look at? He was sleeping in the midst of a storm. Jesus was sleeping in the storm. The lightning flashing across the sky didn't wake Jesus up. And the kettle drum thunder, boom, did not wake Jesus up. The water didn't wake him up. Maybe as it hit, as it hit his face. The only thing that woke Jesus up was when his disciples prayed. Because when you pray, God gets involved. And there is never a situation which you will, that you will find yourself in where there is no hope. Don't forget that. In fact, notice what Jesus says to Jarius after they say, don't bother the master anymore. Look at verse 36. Jesus said, pay, Jesus paid no attention to what they said, but told him, don't be afraid only believe. Don't be afraid, only believe. Now, if Jesus can say that to somebody who just was told their daughter is dead, believe, then that's the worst thing that can happen is death. So if he can say that, he's saying that to you on less things like your bills being paid, uh, reconciliation with somebody that you've been estranged with, your ability to make it. Jesus is saying to you the same thing he's saying to Jairus, and that is keep believing and don't be afraid. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today and bless your people. We will have our highs and our lows. One minute we're happy because you said you're coming to the house. Next, The next minute messengers come with bad news of something that seems irreversible, but nothing is irreversible when you are with us. So help us to not be afraid and to keep believing. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for joining with me with another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, I'd like to extend an invitation to you to become a part of the St. Stephen Church. You can be a virtual member, a virtual disciple. Email us here at St. Stephen Church, Louisville, Kentucky, at newstart at ssclive.org, and we will get back with you. Well, peace and blessings to you. We'll pick up again on this tomorrow. But until then, don't forget during COVID-19, uh, don't forget to get the booster, get, get the vaccine, and stay safe, stay sane, and never forget that God is still in control. Peace and blessings. I'll see you tomorrow.